Hello everyone, my name is Kathy G. Johnson. I am an author, I make comic books, so that's also known as a cartoonist. I'm a cartoonist printmaker, so I make screen prints, and I'm also an educator. So today we are going to be doing a workshop together about making our own comic book pages. I'm so excited to be here at Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Thank you so much for having me. My latest book for middle school readers is called The Breakaways, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it by reading the back copy. Quiet, sensitive Faith starts middle school already worrying about how she will fit in. To her surprise, Amanda, a popular 8th grader, convinces her to join the soccer team, the Bloodhounds. Never having played soccer in her life, Faith ends up on the C team, a ragtag group that's way better at drama than at teamwork. Although they are awful at soccer, Faith and her teammates soon form a bond both on and off the soccer field that challenges their notions of loyalty, identity, friendship, and unity. The Breakaways is a portrait of friendship in its many forms and a raw and beautifully honest look into the lives of a diverse and defiantly independent group of kids learning to make room for their, themselves in the world. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I made the breakaways from start to finish and then together we are going to make our own one page comic book from start to finish. So let me show you how I made the breakaways. So the first thing that I did when I started, wanted to start working on my book, The Breakaways, is I started brainstorming who the characters were. So these are some of the earliest drawings I did of all my characters. So this is my character, Soda Can, who is in seventh grade. She is in 12 years old, and she is number one. And what that number is, is the number that corresponds with their team number on their uniform. So Soda Can is right here. She's number one. She's also the first character that our main character, whose name is Faith, meets. So she's number one. So you can do anything with your characters. This is just the way I started laying out my characters because the Breakaways is about a soccer team. So these are some of the earliest drawings of these characters. So here's Sammy, who is number nine. Here's Molly, whose nickname is Bulldog. She's number five. Number two, Marie. And here's our main character, Faith. There's a few more characters that get introduced and are part of the book. in addition to the rest of the Bloodhounds team. So here's their coach. Here's Jalissa, she's number three. Here's Mara, who's number seven. And Mara actually had her name changed to Zoe in the final book. So here she is. It's interesting to think about how your characters change over time. So you see how she, her design is the same, but she's drawn really differently. And also her name is now Zoe in the final book rather than Mara. Here's Hong. Yara Lise. And also in the story are some elements of fantasy. So here is a fantastical knight character that Faith comes up with in her own imagination. Her name is Sir Matilda. And here's V. And then the final drawing is Faith, the main character, and her dad. Because I find it's really important for characters to have family and friends, right? Because family is really important to characters and to us. 
So I started writing by hand at first, and it was originally entitled Every Dog for Herself. So here are tons of very early sketches of these characters. Names have changed, elements of the story have changed, but this is all the brainstorming work that I did. And figuring out who your characters are helps you write the story. And then I started writing by hand, and again I was just sketching the characters and figuring out points of plot that I wanted to happen. What I felt like was important to each character. And I would do experiments, art experiments. And eventually, there's a lot of this. And eventually, I started writing everything down on the computer. So this is the very first script. And if you look at this, it's not that many pages long. So this was chapter one, titled The Bloodhounds, and what I wanted to happen, establish current friendships. So this is an outline, one, two, three, four, uh, for all the different moments I wanted to happen in my book. So this is the whole outline of the book. And then I started adding more details. This is script number two. I started adding details, fleshing out what I wanted to happen in each point. So you see now point one is now has all this extra information about it. It has dialogue, so those are words that characters are saying to each other. It has um, different visuals that I wanted to happen. And eventually, I started writing the full finished script. So after I had written the outlines for the script, I started writing the fully finished script. So you see I kept it in this binder and here it is. Look at how thick that is. It's almost as thick as the final book. So, you'll see how I have a draft number one from January 9th, 2014, and I have a draft number three here from April 10th, 2014. And what I did is I wrote out every single visual, every moment, different page numbers on different panel numbers, and I wrote what happens in every single page. You'll see it kind of looks like a movie script, which is actually the program that I used. I used a movie script writing um, program. And I wrote this all out because this helps the people that I collaborate with when you're making a book, and that is your publisher. So you write everything out because then you can share with your publisher what is going to happen in the final book, in your vision of what that's going to be like. So once I had the script finished, it was time to share it with my publisher in something called a pitch. So here is the pitch for Every Dog for Herself. Again, it eventually got renamed. So this was an original graphic pitch by me, Kathy G. Johnson. Here's the table of contents right on the front. So the people who received this pitch knew what to expect. It has a brief synopsis, a character descriptions, an outline of the full story, and finished sample pages.
So here's the brief synopsis. Again, if you're looking at this, by the way, the pitch kind of spoils the final book. And that's because your publisher wants to know what's going to really happen. So here are all those drawings of those characters again. And here's some of the outline. And here are the final pitch pages. Now you'll notice these pitch pages look pretty different from the final pages. You'll see they're black and white. They're actually completely different drawings. And that's because, again, a book changes a lot from the pitch stage to the final product. So here's that same page where we meet Sodacan and Marie. And here it is again. See how I changed this? These two panels become one panel and other things like that. Some pages changed a lot. Like these pages, this one page became multiple pages in the final book. Those three pages are contained in this one page. So what I did for the final book is I stretched it out instead of having so many panels on one page. By the way, here are those final pages. Look at how huge I painted them. When they got printed, look at how tiny they are comparatively. That's because then I can draw all sorts of detail and it gets printed smaller. Again, you'll notice on these final pages, I don't actually put the words on there. So today during the workshop, you are going to put the words on your pages, but I chose not to. I added those digitally later. So after my publisher liked the pitch, they decided to give me a book offer on it. And I took that and I started working on the final pages. So I took this script that I had that was all text and I printed it out specially on this pipe paper. with corresponding boxes below. So you'll see here on this side, we'll see the script. I printed it really tiny because I wanted it all to fit. And then every this whole script became something that we called the thumbnail. So up here, I could see the script that I was drawing. And then on that blank template of squares, which represented my final pages, I drew with a pencil every page. So this is the first time I ever visualized the entire book. So again, I was looking at the script, and I was adapting everything that I had written to the visual language of cartooning. These drawings aren't supposed to be good. They're not supposed to be the final drawings of the page at all. They are simply simple visual representations of what the final pages are going to look like. 
What are the characters feeling? Where are they in the panel? And then what sort of visual elements am I including? What's important about comic books is that it is a visual medium. So unlike w books that are just words, these pages include all sorts of information for the story that is only visual. So in this, you can see the character Yara Lise. She is playing a bass guitar. See, there aren't any words in this panel, but that doesn't mean this panel isn't important and doesn't need to be read. It's read visually rather than with words. So I drew the entire book. This took me a very long time. It was very fun though, because I really love drawing comics. Comics is just the best. So I drew out the entire script. And then the next part was drawing the final pages. So here are those two pages again. And now this doesn't look very familiar, right? So the first step was drawing the pencils. So after the thumbnail comes the pencils. So here's that page again, the page of the friends hearing the music and then seeing Yara Lise playing the bass guitar and coming in to talk to her. So if you look at the way this thumbnail looked again, you'll see how in this final penciling stage, there is a lot more detail. Look at the difference between that and that. So there's a lot more detail, it's bigger, and it is going to become the final artwork. So after the penciling stage comes inking. And for inking, I actually taped these pages to the back of other paper that was bigger, and I traced them. So here are the final inks. And I trace them using a trace light box. And then I wrote out all the text that I was then going to digitally put into the word balloons and clean up. So what I wanted to do is I just grabbed my light table and I'm going to show you what this looks like. And do you see how you can see the pencil drawing coming through so I could trace it using ink. And then the word balloons are easy to place because I know how to avoid the faces and I could place the word balloons where I wanted them. You'll see how these word balloons, there's a lot of letters that are crossed out. I had to rewrite them all. And that is because I have something called dysgraphia. If you've ever heard of dyslexia, that's when you're reading and you switch up those letters, right? Well, dysgraphia is a learning difference that I have that is actually when you switch up your letters when you're writing. So I have a hard time spelling by hand. So in a way to fix that and make that work for me is I decided to write everything, all the words on a separate piece of paper and then fix it digitally. After I had finished all of this, I gave my, my final ink pages to my colorist, Kevin Chapieski. And Kevin, whose name is right here, colors by Kevin Chap. 
Kevin actually was the one who digitally colored everything. So let's that find that page number. And here are those final pages. All put together, the words, the inks, the pencils, they all were necessary to get to this place. The script, the thumbnails, the pencils, the inks, all were necessary to get to this final place where it was in a book that you can now borrow from the library. So now what we are going to do is we are going to make our own comic book pages together in a workshop. So to simplify the process, you saw how the process for the breakaways actually has a lot of steps. But to simplify, there's only really four main steps that you need to do to make your own comic book page. And those four steps are script, thumbnail, pencils, and inks. So again, scripts are that the written version of your story. Then a thumbnail is that simple drawing that's very rough just to get the idea of what the page might look like. So you can make changes easily if you want to move things around. Pencils, which are those final drawings with nice, neat lines, all the details that you want in your final page, and then the inks. And even though these inks that I made were done using a light table, I'm going to show you a simpler way of doing it. So for this project, you need some materials. Those materials are at least two, maybe three pieces of paper, a pencil, and some pens. And that's it. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that I want us to do is I want you to grab one of your pieces of paper and set the rest aside. And you're going to fold this in half. One side of your piece of paper is going to be the script. And the other side is going to be your thumbnail. So you saw when I was writing my script, I wrote all my ideas by hand. I drew a character. I drew character sketches, character ideas, and I wrote a short little event of what I want to happen. So you can, in this side of the script, you can write. You Remember, my scripts are actually, were all text, but if you want to try drawing your character, you can absolutely try drawing a new character. Or if you already have a character in mind, you can use that character. So on the script side, I want you to write down what you think is going to happen. So in that first panel, maybe you want to do an introduction of who your character is. So take your time and start thinking about your own ideas. So this is going to be our brainstorming time. Come up with your own ideas and we're going to brainstorm together.
right. Did you have time to come up with your own script idea? You'll notice I did a lot of sketching for my script, but I also wrote different stuff. Maybe it's helpful for you to doodle while you're thinking of ideas, or maybe it's helpful for you to write more. For me, since I do a lot of comic books, it's helpful for me to kind of go back and forth and think about words and images at the same time. So your next step is I want you to draw a thumbnail. I want you to do some crude boxes and I want you to draw out very simple version of what you want to happen in your comic book. What is happening in each panel? Now go. All right, have you finished your thumbnails? So I'm gonna share my final thumbnail. So first with the script, I decided I wanted to do a bear and her best friend, the bird. And I decided this would be my conflict because I wanted to have different emotions present in my story. So here's my thumbnail. First, an introduction for the first character. Hi, my name is Bear. Normally, my forest is very peaceful. So I establish the character Bear, I establish her environment, and I establish some conflict. So, second panel, I explain what that conflict is. Not today, her, her forest is no longer peaceful. 
she lost her best friend. So one thing that is why thumbnails are really fun and interesting is you see how this bear is smaller in this panel and in this panel it's bigger. She's showing more emotion in this panel so I drew her bigger. But it was important for her to be small in this first panel so there was room for the forest behind her. Then in that third panel, I'm not lost bear and then the bird is flying in. Bear is I decided to show her back and her full body, right? So these are just her head and her top arms. But here I decided to show all the way down to her feet to make that panel even more different and interesting than the first two panels. And she says, oh my gosh, bird. So we establish who this character is. And then it ends, I was just getting you a present. Happy birthday. And then bear is so happy and bird is also happy. So that is what's happening in my comic page. I can't wait to see what's happening in your comics. All right, now it's for the next stage. So for the next stage, I want you to set your thumbnail aside. However, you're gonna need to be able to see it because we're gonna start penciling the final comic page. So for this stage, you can get a ruler if you want to. You don't have to. Lots of comic artists make comic pages without straight panel borders, so it's up to you. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out my margins. And I'm gonna do a half inch all the way around my comic page. Next, we are going to look at our panels and we are going to draw the panel borders. So I have four panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want those panels. Do you want your panels to be equal or do you want to do them to be a little bit off? I like it when they're all a little bit off. I think it's interesting. So I'm going to draw that middle one first. And then I'm actually going to have the top and bottom panels not line up. There are my panels. Next, you are going to start drawing. My suggestion is actually to start drawing a loose um, placement of the word balloons and your characters. When this is very, very important with penciling and with all sorts of drawing, is what I want you to do is draw very lightly. Draw so lightly it's hard to see. And that is because you want to be able to erase. Now I know sometimes erasing is because you made a mistake. But in art, there aren't any mistakes. Erasing is just part of drawing. Drawing isn't just the marks on the paper, it's also erasing and finding the right mark. It's how you make discoveries in art. So I never want you to ever shy away from erasing. It's really important and good thing to do. Even the best artists erase all the time.
So here's the first step of penciling. You're going to fill in the word balloons and roughly draw the whole thing as lightly as you can. The next thing that I think is actually important is starting to put in your words because it's easy to accidentally make that word balloon too small for your words. So what I want you to do is lightly write in your words now. There it is, with the words all right. If you did were did something like I did, then some of your word balloons can actually go smaller. So I'm going to do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my Sharpie marker, because I know I like the word balloons, I like the panels, so I'm actually going to start that inking stage this early, and I'm going to ink all my panel borders. And now I'm going to ink those balloons. This one is exclaiming something really loud, so I'm actually going to write in those words too. some white out. There we go. There's no problem that can't be fixed. So here are my loose pencils in my inked word balloons and panel borders. Now I'm going to finish up these pencils by finishing drawing all the details.
are my finished pencils. So you see how there's much more detail than the thumbnail. But you see how the thumbnail helped me figure out what I was going to draw in that final pencil. Now we are going to do inks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to finish inking all the words. That's where we trace over our words. We're going to do it neatly with a pen. And then you start inking the final drawings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth between these two pens to add interest to the pictures. For details that are closer up to the reader, you can use thicker pens.
And now, what you want to do is let it dry for a little bit, and you can erase some of those pencil lines. And here is the final comic page. Hi, my name is Bear. Normally my forest is very peaceful. Not today, I lost my best friend. I'm not lost, Bear. Oh my gosh, bird. I was just getting you a present. Happy birthday. And one thing that's really important is you put your name on them. So this is by me, Kathy G. Johnson, 2020. Now, if you want to, you can now color your comic page. You can use colored pencils. You can use crayons. If you want to use something like markers or watercolor, make sure the pens that you use are waterproof because otherwise your ink might start to run. Please share your final comic pages with us. I really want to see what happens in your comic story. Thank you so much for having me. Again, I want to thank Prince George's County Memorial Library System for having me. Thank you so much. My name is Kathy G. Johnson. Again, my middle grade graphic novel is called The Breakaways, and I'll see you next time. Bye.